So today we're going to pick up where I left off. We're back at Mount Rainier National Park, and I'm going to be covering three different locations in this video, and they all have one thing in common, and that is they're all going to be reflection shots in lakes of Mount Rainier. So my first location is going to be Little Tipsu Lake and then Reflection Lakes. And then the final is a lake that I couldn't find a name for. It's visible from Google Earth, Google Maps. And it's this gorgeous emerald aqua green lake that um, is at the base of the mountain. And it's, it's, it's gorgeous. I knew that I wanted to photograph it. And it was a little trickier to get to than I thought. So let's, uh, let's get started and see what I come away with. So this morning out at Mount Rainier National Park, this is Little Tipsu Lake. Um, it's about 30 minutes before sunrise, but there's plenty of light in the sky, so it's getting, it's got some great possibilities to be really, really, really beautiful. Um, there's some high clouds that hopefully are going to hang around on top of uh, the mountain, but uh, the lake is perfectly still. There's not a drop of wind, which is going to help a lot. It's going to actually make the photograph. It wouldn't wouldn't even work if it wasn't for the uh, still, the, you know, the stillness and the reflection in the lake. But uh, let me show you what it looks like. And uh, there's a little, some high clouds. So this is a really nice possibility for some gorgeous, gorgeous skies. Um, the lake's like perfectly still, got a great reflection in it, as you can see. Camera settings are just the standard stuff for landscape. It's f11. Uh, I'm about 20, 25 seconds, and it's uh, ISO 100. And there's a little bit of mist on the lake. I don't know if you can see it, but that will hopefully hang around. I think that'll add a lot of atmosphere and depth to the image if, if it stays. It's been kind of floating in and out as we've, we've been waiting. Uh, but the mountain is starting to light up a little bit. And you'll notice these trees over here on the right and on the left side of the mountain and it makes a nice v you know, a v shape as it goes down on both sides i don't know if you can see my fingers but it's it does one of this and these diagonals coming in lead your eye right to the mountain in the you know in the background and it does the same in the water and it's a real obvious composition. There's nothing magic about it. I mean, when you come out here, this is where, this is where you would set up. This is what you would do. Um, but <clears throat> just because it's, it's an obvious composition doesn't mean that it's not a good one. Um, this is just a, an excellent place. Just beautiful, gorgeous. So if we can get some cooperation from the sunlight, uh, it's going to be pretty sweet. I, let me just uh, walk you through some composition mistakes that you might make and not be thinking about when you're dealing with reflections. And that is here, you see how the trees are reflected. You don't want to get a shot where the trees touch and intersect here. You want to always give it space. So make sure there is space here in your composition to give to give a to give a distinction and it doesn't blend in or, or touch that way as well. So set up where you've got enough time to, to really finesse that composition and make sure that you're doing your edge patrol around the edges and make sure that there's nothing that's getting in there that uh, you don't want there and also that you've got the separation around the important elements and you're getting exactly what you want because otherwise you'll either be really sad or you'll have to do an awful lot of work in Photoshop and all it would have taken to fix it is to move your tripod like five inches. So this is my favorite shot of the morning. I really like the purples and the pinks in the sky and it's reflected perfectly in the lake below. Unfortunately, as the sun rose, the temperature did as well and that caused the wind to pick up and it just ruined the reflection on the lake so this was my favorite shot of the morning
Good morning. Today we're out at uh, Reflection Lake, and there's several little lakes that are dotted uh, right along the road, so it's a super easy place to get to to shoot. And uh, obviously you're shooting the reflection of the mountain in the lake, hence the name, right? But uh, it's really pretty scene. Um, and the only time to shoot this is early in the morning at sunrise. The rest of the day, the wind starts to pick up and uh, it just kind of ruins the, <clears throat> the whole effect. But usually in the mornings, it's really, really still. And the mirror, the lake becomes like a mirror. So it's pretty awesome. I'll take, take a second and I'll show you what it looks like. So at this lake, I've looked at both the lakes. I like this one the best. And at this one, um, your compositions are, are kind of limited for you. But um, down here at the bottom, I've just got some nice greenery. Um, <clears throat> bushes that are not moving at all, which is going to make it nice. And then obviously the, um, the reflection here. I'm doing my best not to have any of these trees touch into the green. It's going to be very, very tricky depending on inches count on your tripod to make to make this happen down in here. Um, so just fine tuning that composition there. <clears throat> and um, up here, I've got this one tree. I don't know if you can see it, but it's about right here. That's pretty tall, but it's not taller than the mountain. So I'm OK with it. And um, other than that, it's another crystal blue sky morning. Unfortunately, the mountain is not way over there where there is color. Um, but I don't know how to move the mountain to where the color is. So we're going to have to work with what we got. So let's see what we can do. So you can see the back of the camera. I'm zoomed in. This is super nitpicky, but you can see that the, uh, the tree, this is the reflection in the water. And it's not touching any of the, my foreground elements. Um, and as I move it around, I'm just checking to make sure that all of those reflections are clean. As I go around, I'm just checking and everything looks really, really, really good. Now see, there's a problem right here. I don't know if I can fix it, but that's at the very edge of the screen. So it's probably probably gonna have to let that go. And also don't forget that I'm, uh, I'm, I can always crop just a little to eliminate that. So let me zoom back out. And yeah, that's uh, it's way over in the corner. So uh, I can easily crop that just a little bit from the bottom in, uh, maybe even do a, like a, you know, a four by five or something and get rid of that. And actually, as the sun's starting to come up, we are getting just a tad bit of color down here in the lake. I don't know if it's gonna show up on the video or not. It, or it will definitely show up in the, in the photograph. And these high, very, very high clouds is catching just a little bit of pink and there's a little bit of pink um, over here on the left shoulder of the mountain that's starting to light up. So uh, it's better than I was uh, expecting. I just was expecting a pretty much a blue sky, but we got a little bit of color. And as far as settings go, I'm at like 24 millimeters, F9 is plenty. Um, and I'm underexposing like by about a stop and letting the ISO fall wherever it needs to. And right now it's at 320 and that's going to change. I'm going to keep um, lowering that ISO as the sun comes up. But let me grab some shots before this light goes away. It won't last long. I was right. The color in the sky didn't last very long at all before it vanished. The sun as it came up just washed it out and the sky became just pure blue. So I managed to capture the shot with those gorgeous pinks and reds on the shoulders of the mountain being reflected in the lake, and I really love how it turned out. Those with a keen eye may notice that that really tall tree in the middle of the mountain is gone, and I deliberated on it for a very long time, and I just decided to remove it. Now, if you're a purist, you may disagree with me, and that's okay, but for me, this is the look that I wanted, and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. Now, another shot I wanted to share from the same morning was I included it in the video very briefly where the sky was orange. 
and I wanted to include it because the colors were just so beautiful and at this little pocket at the end of the lake there was mist rising up and the orange from the sky being reflected in the lake with the mist rising and that really nice log in the right hand side leading into the into the frame with the center of interest I thought it was just gorgeous so I absolutely had to include this shot in in the video and I'd like to hear your feedback. What do you think about me removing that tree? And which shot do you like better? The Reflection Lake shot or this shot with the mist? So maybe today is the day for reflection shots. Um, bushwhacked, really just bushwhacked into this lake and uh, no idea if there was a vantage point or anything. And by just determination and a lot of luck, uh, just this fell into just 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 fell into view is just come around a little bend and there was a area that was kind of clear and we've got uh, you know these great peaks over here uh, on the left and then nice reflection and this water is a nice green blue aqua blue it's about it's nine o'clock and it would have been better to be a little earlier but might be a place to come back but again there's there's no trail here this is total just figuring it out and, and bu just bushwhacking through the bushes and uh, it's fantastic and again composition wise um, I'll show you what it, what I've uh, what I've kind of set up okay there's no way to show you on the camera because it's just way way too bright on the back of it so um, basically there's a there's a little pine tree is going to be on my frame on my left and uh, there is a a little tree down here in the bottom on the right again I'm trying to think of natural framing for the photograph I'm trying to make sure that I have down um, down here in the water I've got the you know the peak and then I've got the main peak I can't help the fact that down here at the very bottom I've got some dead wood uh, I'll probably just leave it I might clone it out I don't know but um, I love the fact that we've got light you know, we've got the light reflection, we've got a little dark, we got a little light, we got a little dark, we got a little light, then we got more dark, and then another light uh, with the glaciers up on the mountain. So that that just leads your eye through the photo and it gives you uh, your eye a place to go. This might look epic as a black and white, uh, and I'm probably going to try that. I think a black and white would look great. There are some clouds in the sky which really make it doable as a, as a daytime shot, but um, I'll show you the, the, the finished photo. Uh, at the end of the video. So here's the color version of the photograph. And I love the aqua blue of the lake and the reflection. There was a little bit of wind that picked up. So I managed to get a shot with, with a really calm lake, which really helped that reflection. Uh, the clouds in the sky really make an impact as far as breaking up that huge expanse of blue so I really like that as well I think it would have worked a lot better had I gotten there early in the morning right at sunrise so I converted it to a black and white now this I like I like the tonal contrast better in this but we lose all of the blue and the aqua greens of the lake and the trees so I'm not sure which one I prefer. So let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate any feedback. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. We'll see you next time.